Uh, so, I do not have a physical copy of Tesla Effect, which would uh, explain, at least to some degree, why I haven't read it. So, uh, let's say, first of all, the game, as we've, uh, as we've talked about many times <laughs> at Adventure X and other places, and now we'll talk about again uh, in, in a recorded setting, is that the game, bless its heart, did its best to do what Pandora Directive did so fabulously, multi-paths, conversations that matter, uh, your character will remember that, and so on and so forth, even the love triangle bit, and sort of got halfway there, and then they mm. ran out of whatever it was they ran I, out of. I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna not be as nice about Tesla Effect, and believe me, that that does not give me any pleasure at all. I love the Tex a, Murphy series. Yeah. No, no, not, not that. <laughs> I, 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 kick, I helped kickstart the Tex Murphy game. I was really excited for it. And unfortunately, I was really let down by it. And the trouble with it, if, if I could like to sort of nail it down to one thing, is they mm. tried to do too much. They certainly Because um, if you play Pandora Directive, yes, there are three paths. Tesla Effect is kind of three games, kind of sort of fairly inelegantly mashed together. And I don't mean that as a... Um, as, a, as a, like a description, that's literally what it is. The original plan for the series after Overseer, which was a retelling of Mean Streets, was they were going to be doing three games called, I think, Chance, Polarity, and Trance. Yeah, and, but in the reverse order. Yeah, it was yeah, just... yeah. but either way, basically, the, the elements that we know of, that they were planning from that, yeah. with uh, through stuff like Tex Murphy Radio Theatre and kind of other sort of comments over the time, basically, they kind of crammed all of them into Tesla Effect, and it just doesn't work um well, it kind of trips work, over itself well uh, that's the problem that's the problem the, 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 the single worst mistake the tesla effect makes is that it ties the plot that you get to the romance that you choose to follow mm -hmm. uh, which is basically a disastrous idea on, on a couple of different levels the first being that in the nature it, during the story tex is effectively the man he was on the night that Chelsea was kidnapped. So the idea of him chasing, an, chasing another woman at that point in his life is none. Both, you know, in, yeah. in, in, in Pandora, sure. Post Overseer, no. If he was actually 10 years later and he had those memories and he moved on, fine. But the text that we knew at Overseer would not would not have stopped for one second. He would have, you know, even as he does in the, in, in the backstory, um, he would have burned heaven and earth to get her back. He's not going to fall for anybody else the next day. And with with so well I, I guess technically it depends on because you've got the uh, you know your novel source material as it were kind of source material i guess where tex is one sort of character but you can play pandora directive as a self-serving jerk who lets lucy get killed gets himself drunk every night oh, abso absolutely but, goes after regan uh, and the big cash payout and you can play tesla effect but i think, but I think the big thing, the big thing is that between pandora and tesla effect was overseer Mm -hmm. And Overseer basically established that, you know, the, the good ending of Pandora was like the canonical one. And the entire sort of setup um, for Tesla Effect follows on from the one where Tex and Chelsea get together. Yes. So at, at that point, they're kind of locked in that they're together. Yes. And then, you know, again, like I said, if it, if it had actually been 10 years of looking for Chelsea and then, you know, he sort of given up, then fine, that, that would work. But during the story it is literally the text one day after having the date in which he he, he sort of shared with uh, chelsea that doesn't work and second and secondly because the, the sort of three stories kind of sort of crammed together the the actual tesla um story about the tesla cash and um all of the, uh, the translator and all of that kind of stuff then you've also got the russian revolution stuff with the romanovs and jason yeah. donnelly and you've also got this whole other stuff with um was it was saying tra trailer um louis louis niece anyway. oh right um, yeah the other one you can chase after yeah it, it, it's just and then when you also then sort of take that you put in all of this fan servicey stuff of kind of calling back to previous characters and previous scenes and you start bringing in characters like Big Jim Slade, who serve absolutely no purpose in this story. And in fact, it must have been a really strange phone call. Like, I imagine them phoning up Richard Norton and just being, you know, well, you want me to act? You know, yeah. how, many, how, many, how, many, how many roundhouse kicks? None! No, you, 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 you have you lines. Want to just, you want me to just talk to a guy and not kick him in the head. You can, you can mug and, for a bit. You can do that. And, 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 and like, like I said, it just, it's too much. 
Um, uh, let's, and I let's, think let's, no, wait, let's be, I, on, let's be honest. The clock tower scene in Overseer where Richard Norton and Chris Jones get in a fist fight and quip at each other is some of the finest oh, comedy no, action no, there no, is. No, so no, Richard Norton no, no, can no, act. Oh, no, no argument whatsoever. But, you, but I, would, I would argue th that you might pay Richard Norton to quip and do roundhouse kicks. You don't normally pay him to stand in front of a green screen and talk. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you might not. Um, and you might like it. And, and again, his, his role in Test Reflect is very much, hi, I'm back again because I was popular in the last game, with good reason. Mm -hmm. But it, he doesn't really sort of serve any purpose. He's just like, he's there because... And, and like I said, the whole, the whole thing is basically like a mess of stuff. Which, makes the, book, which makes the book more interesting. Mm. Because effectively, all of the major problems with the story of Tesla Effect are fixed in the book. There's no love triangle, for one. There, well, there kind of is, but it's one-sided. In that it's between... Um, I'm just going to look up her name again, because I, I read this only today, but uh, I'm already blanking. I think it's, it's uh, Taylor. Yeah, it, it's, it's Taylor... Um, Taylor is Louis's niece. niece, right? And then That's there's right. latex suit girl who pretends to be... Ariel. Mason's wife. And... Ariel Bauer. Yeah, Ariel. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I mean, in in the in the book, there's still like an element of the love triangle, um, but it's the way it should be. That it's all about Taylor basically saying to Tex, "Like I still love you," and I kind of I miss the man you became. While he's, you know, I'm not actually that man. I don't like that man, he's and kind I still of a want to find out what happens. Well, exactly. I, I want to find out what happened to Chelsea, mm. and um, likewise with the Ariel stuff. She's still the fan fatale character. But there is no hint that Tex is really going to go for it. You know, it, 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 no. And, and we, we were giving Regan a, a bit of shit uh, for, for being like uh, the I have tits character of Pandora Directive. I actually it, like, I, I like Regan in, in Pandora Directive. I think she's fine. Uh, um, the novel, yes, but the game is sort of sort of glosses over the whole... I mean, it's, she's just a money-grabbing opportunist in, in the game and doesn't really mm. get a lot of character development. She has more character development in the novel. Ariel, mm. on the other hand, is like a cardboard cutout. Oh god, yeah. She has nothing to do in the game besides go. You like latex? A a a I got a that. Ariel, Ariel is literally a latex costume. Yes. Um, oh, and, and <laughs> the you know, some, Yeah, I, she, she's bad. Uh, not the actor. The actress is oh, fine. The actress I mean, is the fine. Char the character mm. is so two-dimensional. And again, it, a lot of it is because they're trying to do too much. In that, uh, if you heard uh, Tex Murphy Radio Theatre, you'd already kind of have an idea of where they were going with the whole Romanov thing. And when you're playing the but when you're playing the game, that whole plot element just vanishes after a couple of hours, unless you're specifically <laughs> on that path. It really um, boggles the mind, because I, I went back and went through all the paths. And if you want to go to the uh, I'm the reincarnated uh, dude with the JT Donnelly. JT Donnelly and also Fabergé eggs and Romanovs and, and mm. trains and all of that. There's like a room in the sewer that you can get to if you choose one of the uh, paths. I the believe, yeah, the aerial path. You, you go with Ariel. The, she, with the white Russians and so on. Yeah. And and then you, you get into a room in the sewer that has all these photographs. Tex has like a million flashbacks all at once, and then it's never brought up again. Mm. And the thing is, it's just not relevant to the story. Whereas not anymore, again, it isn't. It, whereas again, in um, the novel version, that stuff is mentioned, but it's like an aside. It, it's, it's kind of a, this is a thing we're going to have to look into at some point, mm. but right now, this is the priority. And... I mean, Oh, so good. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm just interested because if I'm, if I'm going to be honest, the thing that bugged me about the Tesla, Tesla effect the most, the, the three plot points you mentioned, the one that bugged me the most is the reincarnation stuff. I feel that's mm. kind of like putting aliens in Indiana Jones territory. It's like mm. we didn't really. I mean, I'm okay with Roswell aliens, I guess. I, I'm okay with mutants and night and day has been reversed and all that. I'm not sure I'm okay with reincarnation. I'm, I mean, I, I kind of got to end of Tesla Effect. And I wasn't really sure what was going on. In in the you know the it, it sort of seems like a very multi-purpose doomsday device. Yeah, um, you know it, 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 did, speaks it? The, it speaks to the dead. It brings people back to life. It cracks the world in half. It's like you know what what exactly am I fighting against? And Again, the book makes this a lot clearer. You know, the, the villain, the villain's actually quite interestingly done in that he's a much more uh, laid back figure, a much more trusting figure. Um, there's no uh, big Jim Slade in the novel. Uh, instead, his henchman is uh, Dalton Fisk, the guy from uh, The End of Overseer. Adrian uh, Carr. Played by, played by Adrian Carr, <laughs> um, who basically is sort of 
the, the, so you've got this nice split between the two of them where the translator and, the, and it's so nice just to have one line that tells you what they mean by that you know um, as opposed to it being kind of kept vague yeah. uh, but the, trans, the translator is kind of very um, like open and somewhat trusting and kind of you know not re- a, bit, a bit like Jay St. Gideon he's not really a villain villain in that you know his plan might be problematic but he's not a moustache twirler in the way that the Phantom of the Opera from the game was. Mm. Um, at Suddenly my, Dalton, my where, upper lip was itchy for some reason <laughs> when you said that. Whereas, whereas, whereas Dalton is um, the cynic who's kind of out for money and kind of doesn't trust Tex. And kind of, there's a fantastic scene where um, the translator basically, you know, is talking to Tex, just like kind of, oh, hey, well, you know, this is kind of what we're doing. And, you know, I, I hope you'll do your part. Uh, anyway, um, Fisk, you know, take take him take him outside, you know, take, take him back home. It, it, it's all good. Um, it's kind of fairly laid back, and which of course uh, Fisk probably does. And then he smacks him on the back of the head with a pipe, which is like, like I'm not that guy. Oh, you know, right. you you will do what we tell you to do. And for some reason, Texas head and magnetic or, 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 or pipes are like like they're magnetic. The chameleon oh, gave yeah. him a whack once. <laughs> now it's first. Anyway, it's interesting because that actually would imply that. Um, uh, the Adrian Carr character actually has a personality mm. and uh, that the translator for one has a purpose other than being a mm. reincarnated weirdo who has a, a fascination with uh, Incan artifacts and gluing them to his head. Oh, that is so weird. And and for some reason building a gigantic tower underground that can speak to his wife who, mm. who was killed like I don't know a couple of days ago? It, it, it's fair. I mean, again, the book does is, is a bit clear about exactly what he wants, and I like to. It, it's just having that one line that explains what they mean by translator. Now, I'm not saying that the game doesn't do that ever, but I'm saying in the book it is very clear. Like text just sort of straight up says, "Translator, you mean as in other languages?" And someone says, "No, no, translating from you know dead to alive. That that's what we're doing. Oh. That that's the, that's the, the plan." Um, and, and again, because they've sort of stripped out most of the game stuff, most of the bullshit is gone. <laughs> um, like in, in the game, you get to say Sen um, or Sesen, yeah. um, and the game just dies on its ass. Whereas <laughs> in the in the book, they don't overcomplicate. I, I don't think there's all that stuff about like they've the, the, the cryogenics has created an army of sewer mutants, and um, you know that they've got whole cults and things running. It's it just it's just. It's much more manageable in terms of what they actually want, what everyone's after. It's not like um, a series of logic puzzles to let you into the. Oh God, no, no, no! Okay. You, you don't, you don't have to do the old one where you try and get a fox and a chicken no. across a no. river, which, which I never they, understood because for, for they reused reuse that from Pandora, even. Like. I, I know. I mean, at, at least in Pandora, from it was like being used for like a bomb or something, like moving electrons and kind of fine. That that's yeah. sort of okay, but in Tesla Effect, you just literally we're well, just going to put the puzzle up on a big screen. And yes. you can't leave until you do it. <laughs> and then in the next room, it's like a maze, and it's just like, no. Um, whereas, again, in, in the book, it's much more of an actual infiltration. He goes to this place, he um, kind of goes downstairs, he sort of finds the guy, he does he does a thing, and it's it, it actually works as a story. Hmm. And in fact, there's a couple of things in the, in the book which I really like, which um, the game doesn't come close to. Like, if you played Overseer, and um, the, 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 the ending line... Um, is, you know, things could be worse, things could yeah. get worse. And Before he takes it, a bullet and end credits. Exactly. And, 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 and in the book, he actually kind of sort of comes up with like, what what the hell was all that about? Mm. Um, and the guy sort of says, basically, well, it's a, it's a line I want you to remember. And slight spoiler, but whatever. Um, the, 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 the toward, towards the end of the book, basically, Tex finally gets his revenge. Um, by using um, like the same kind of mind wiping stuff uh, on Fisk that Fisk used on him. There's the trans and, word, right? So I guess he injects Fisk with something and then tells him the tra- what is the trans phrase. His trans phrase um, is something worse. Well, it, what, it's, it's basically what he does is that to get into um, like the final, you know, the, the final level, as it were, mm-hmm. um, the big underground in, radio in, thing. In, in the in the game, you have an incredibly long section. In the Tesla Legacy Society, you've got this whole underground thing. Yes, like, oh, that was all so the stuff lovely. that never ends. In the <laughs> in the book, um, he basically shoots Fisk with the the transducer um, that he used on him, and basically wipes his memory and kind of gives him sort of very simple instructions to get them past the guard. They just drive in, um, mm. at which point later on he, he sort of reveals you know what he did, and there's this sort of great line. Oh, it's obviously you know Fisk has, has admitted to being the the one who kind of dealt with Chelsea. 
And there's this fantastic line um, where, where Tex basically says, you know, I'd effectively killed him, but I had plans. <laughs> and, he, and he effectively handcuffs him uh, to the machine as it's about to explode. Hmm. And then hits him with the things could get worse tagline to bring him back to himself just in time to see the machine blow up and kill him. And, and it's like, wow. That's, that is... that's cruel, even by <laughs> Texas standards, really. <laughs> I but, it's, but it's like that has this wonderful don't mess with text kind of sort of feel to it. I, and I, I like that sense of, you know, he has been pushed too far. And now right. this, this, the, the nice guy who will generally, you know, work with his with his enemies, at least to some extent, who's always kind of sort of witty, is just like, you know, I am ending you. Mm-hmm. And this is just sort of, and not only am I ending you, I'm going to make sure you are awake when I end you. Right. And, and it just adds, it adds a sort of wonderful like, twist of the knife to, you know, um, the, the the dark tech stuff, which we don't really kind of get into because he gets mind wiped before we see much of it. Yeah, he does. And, you know, it's interesting you bring up the ending because the ending is, is one of those things in the game that just sort of hits the fast forward button. A lot of things blow up and then uh, mm. the translator just sort of stands there and goes, isn't it pretty? A uh, mm. lot of questions about that. But I think first and foremost, in the game, it's sort of not really revealed exactly what the translator was planning. Apparently he just wanted to say hi to his dead wife. Uh, and it, second- it, it's, it's, it's basically b- breaking the, the barrier between the living and the dead. Uh, and it's, but it's kind of vague as to exactly why he wants that. And Yeah, but Margaret was sort of working on that in the first place and her entire lab blew up. So mm-hmm. he must have read a note somewhere that said this is a bad idea. But anyway, what he does instead is just magnify the project to immense proportions, hit the on switch, and then stand back a little befuddled when everything explodes around him. Mm. What was he thinking was going to happen? I mean, my, my favorite part about the ending is that Tex is basically, can I just use your doomsday weapon before you go? <laughs> like, yeah, you can have and a go. it does. <laughs> I, I, I'm just like so. I, we'll just stand back and kind of let you let you play with the controls, and you know, I I, I don't use this term often, but worst villain ever. You know? Yeah, translator. Yeah, in in the game at least. Uh, I mean, lovely acting for what, for some strange reason. I think for a guy who's encased in in eyeliner and weird mm. plastic things glued to his face, he does a tremendous the, 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 job. I think I think it's a fantastic job as the most fabulous Phantom of the Opera that I've ever seen. Yes. Um, no, I mean, again, I don't like bagging on Tesla Effect. I was really looking forward to it. So unfortunately, I was really disappointed by it. Um, but I think all of the production of it was actually great. You know, I love the design. I love the, the look of the, the, the areas. I think the acting is pretty solid. Certainly for, you know, like a full FMV game, you know, I it, it's got that sort of, um, in a really good way, it's kind of got that sort of somewhat amateurish charm to it, you know, where everyone really seems into what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to win Oscars, but like nobody just feels like they're there for the money. No, you know, it's everyone like, you know, we're, leans we're, into we're, it. We're, we're actually having a good time, you know. Be, yeah. You know, uh, you know, it's good to get the wig out and be Rook again. And, you know, it's fun to, you know, ha- uh, chat with, you know, Louis and Tex and so on. I think I, I really like a lot of the individual bits. It's problem. Apart from Seisen, which is shocking, <laughs> its problem is trying to do too much. Right. And I, I, and I understand that because they, they, quite clearly they sort of thought it was going to be that, like their last outing with Tex. That's actually not the case anymore. We've got the Poison Pawn coming up, obviously, which is a retelling basically of everything up to this point. And then after that, they're looking at doing another game. I can't wait for them. Do not mistake this as being a, a hatred of the series. Oh, no. Oh, but, perish the thorn. Oh, sorry. Let, I'll let you finish, no, no, and, no. and then I'll call you West. You, but I was just going to say that the the, the, the I like the, the Tesla Effect novel um, because even though I'd say it's pro- it's a lot weaker than Pandora. Um, I, I, will, I will say that Pandora is by far the best tech novel. Mm-hmm. Um, it has that sense of oh, I, I actually get what they were trying to do now, <laughs> um, and I'm really hope. And, and, and I know that one of the the problems which they had with Tesla Effect was that Connor's basically wasn't able to write it because he was you know, under contract with, um, I think, EA or someone like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so That's an open it, secret, by the way. We're not d- disclosing no, I mean, anything I mean, we're I mean, not it's, supposed it's, to. It's, that, was pretty, that was pretty well known. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think the, the book kind of sort of shows that his plotting and you know the way that he sort of ties the sort of story threads together um, is a really crucial bit of the series. Obviously, everyone looks at Chris Jones as Tex, and you know, Chris Jones is great. So I, again, I'm, I'm not bagging on Chris. But I think they need 
a con is there to basically pull things together um, yeah. and actually kind of approach it from this kind of sort of more literary thing. Where, 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 where like Pandora or whatever, um, feel like a, a single story which works really well. Tesla is a collection of bits. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, the through line through them is just all over the place. You're broken by like how many story threads they've got, how many characters they're dealing with, how many um, alternate paths they've got, how many endings they've got. I mean, the, the first ending that I got when I played through Tesla was garbage. Um, I have you know, no idea. Is, is that the one on the roadside diner? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, mine too. I, 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 what the fuck what, was what that? The hell, what the hell was this? Like, <laughs> and I, I, I know that Pandora has the clown ending, but at least that, even that has that this sort of sense of... sort of sense, yeah. I, I mean, even, even that has this sort of sense of, you know, well, you know, I'm just broken. I've given up, you know, the PI saying I'm, I'm going to be a sad clown. Mm -hmm. Whereas this was like, what? And where what? are we? And why are we here? Why and... are you there with Sapphire? You know, what, yeah. Is she in the novel, by the way? Yes, she is, but only very briefly. All right. Is uh, Texas' biggest fan? Yes, he is, but again, oh. very, but again, very briefly. Like mo most of the characters are there for like a couple of pages, and then we never speak with them again. 